r slash rules horror posted by you slash the gecko wrangler nick and rick's pizza rules for delivering to the chime maker hello daryl it goes without saying that we're beyond relieved the mock hide didn't give you any trouble on your latest crr delivery we've never exactly been keen on sending pizzas to that abomination after what it did to andrew not that we have much say in that particular matter but in any case all is well and we'll thus be shortly sending you on yet another delivery to that ominous pond within that curious neighborhood. As always, we've once again included any and all information you could possibly need regarding this customer. Given how well you've done so far, we're sure you'll do just fine, but do try to be extra cautious around this next customer. It's very easy to catch his attention. You'll soon understand that is very much the last thing you want from him. Customer name, The Chime Maker. Address, 2943 Champlain. Regular order, sardine pizza, topped additionally with large acorns, assorted tree seeds, whole scallops shells still attached, and smooth flat rocks exact toppings often vary slightly with each order. Residence description, massive sycamore tree, growing right alongside the upper bank of Broken Hand Pond's first finger. Its branches have been heavily adorned with innumerable wind chimes of various shapes and sizes. Customer description, the chime maker strongly resembles a Palasian man in his mid-twenties. He's tall, measuring at slightly over 6 feet in height, and notably thin, with his ribs being prominently visible. He's entirely bald, and his choice of clothing is unique, all of it, from the baggy pair of shorts on his legs to the short jacket on his upper body, is made entirely of miscellaneous scraps of colorful fabric. The one exception to this is a long white blindfold he wears at nearly all times. Interestingly, the chime maker doesn't wear shoes of any kind. This is because his feet aren't exactly normal, they're much like those of a monkey ending in long fingers accompanied by a strong thumb, as opposed to short stubby toes. They all end an inch long, ivory colored, half crescent shaped claws as do his actual fingers, with the inner edge of each one being thinly serrated, almost like the edge of a blade. Additionally, the chime maker's arms are equal in length to his legs, and his teeth are heavily serrated, much like those of a snake. The only other notable thing about him is his eyes, though thanks to the blindfold, they normally aren't visible which is definitely for the best. Rules for delivery 1. Before leaving for the area, be sure to take a pair of gloves with you from our supply room, wearing them until you return. They just might make the difference here. 2. When you get close to the tree, you may hear rhythmic whistling emanating from within its branches. If you do, get back in the car and stay put until the whistling stops. That sound can only mean that the chime maker is seeking new prey. You could easily become that new prey if you're not careful. 3. Once the whistling has ceased for longer than a minute it's safe to approach the tree. To find the chime maker, you'll have to walk under the tree's lower branches, towards its trunk. Chances are, he'll be hanging from one of those low branches by his right foot, diligently working on another wind chime for his collection. For as he always wears the blindfold whilst he works, the chime maker won't see you approaching him. Thus, he's easily startled by sudden noises to avoid startling him. Gently tap your finger against one of the branches. He should greet you shortly afterwards. 5. Do not attempt to get the chime maker's attention any other way. Any sound other than gentle knocking will spook him greatly, and he'll most likely rip off his blindfold to identify the source of the sound. Trust us, that is the last thing you want to happen. 6. When speaking to the chime maker, be as monotone as you possibly can. It's important you put as little emotion and individuality in your words while around him, he finds personalities extremely intriguing, and he may find yours to be quite artistically inspiring if you're not careful. If one thing's for sure, nothing good ever comes from inspiring the chime maker to make art. 7. Do the best you can not to look at whatever the chime maker is using to create his next wind chime, chances are, it's the most recent thing that inspired him, a sight like that is nothing short of disturbing, and any reaction you give to it might inspire him further. 8. The chime maker is extremely flexible, during the delivery, he'll often twist and contort himself into an impossible number of visibly disturbing shapes, all while working on his next wind chime. Be careful not to sound disgusted or disturbed by the sight of this in any way, he finds both of those emotions to be quite inspiring. 9. The chime maker is surprisingly comical, often making unexpected jokes and exaggerated movements regularly. Do your best not to laugh, or otherwise react to his antics, a sense of humor is one of his favorite things, and laughter inspires him greatly. 10. The chime maker will want to inspect the pizza before he purchases it. To do so, he'll remove his blindfold. When he goes to take it off, Avert your eyes, it's best you never see what's under that blindfold. 11. Once the chime maker eventually voices his approval of the pizza, 
It's safe to look at him again. He'll have definitely put his blindfold back on by that point he dislikes keeping it off for extended periods. 12 The chime maker will pay with a handful of resin stones, possibly even giving you one with an insect or plant inside as a tip. Be certain you're wearing those gloves before you take the rocks from him, the feeling of your skin might make him curious about you, as well as what kind of wind chime the bones under that skin might make. 13 Do not be surprised if the chime maker starts removing toppings from the pizza. He's trying to figure out which pieces will be best for his next wind chime, he doesn't eat anything without making part of it into a wind chime first. 14 As you leave, make sure the chime maker is still working on his current wind chime, there's always a chance his interaction with you will have given him second thoughts about whether or not you would make a better wind chime. He rarely hesitates to change his mind at that point. Rules for when the blindfold comes off. 1 If the chime maker takes the blindfold off outside of inspecting the pizza, you need to be extremely careful with everything you say and do until you leave his sight especially if he takes it off while you are talking with him. He only takes that blindfold off when looking for new food, so there's a good chance he's considering you as a choice. As such, it's best to take a few extra precautions to ensure he still finds the pizza more appealing than you. 2 Politely but immediately show the chime maker the pizza when the blindfold first comes off. With any hope, he'll find the pizza intriguing enough to ignore you entirely. 3 Do not make unnecessary or dramatic movements of any kind. Those will grab his attention quickly, along with his inspiration. 4 Make as few facial expressions as possible. This should go without saying, but he'll likely find the emotions those expressions represent quite intriguing. 5 Again. Be as monotone as possible while you speak. You don't want him to become any more intrigued of your personality than he already is. 6 Use the word malleable in a sentence. For whatever reason, he's not terribly fond of it. Hearing the word tends to kill his inspiration, and with it his appetite. Do not use malleable more than once. If he becomes too uninspired, he may take you captive, keeping you trapped until he can see if he'll find you inspiring later on. 7 Do not make direct eye contact with him at any point. Don't even look towards his face if possible, his eyes are extremely entrancing, to the point that they strongly influence anyone who looks into them, even if it's just for a second. 8 If the chime maker starts chuckling as he speaks, it's beyond important now that you do everything you possibly can to take his attention off of you. He only chuckles when he's found another source for a new wind chime. 9 Should you hear animals of any kind nearby, quickly bring their presence to the chime maker's attention. There's a decent chance he'll decide to investigate them for his next chime instead, at which point he'll quickly pay for his pizza and immediately dash off to collect the new source for his next wind chime. 10 If you don't hear any animal calls, instead point out any birds you see nearby, describing them with as much detail as possible there's enough of them in that neighborhood that at least one should show up. Birds are among his favorite sources for wind chimes, so he might forget about you entirely in favor of them instead. 11 If all else fails, ask the chime maker about his wind chimes. He deeply cherishes his memories of making each and every one of them, along with the memories of the unlucky creatures and people he made them all from. Remembering them all will distract him from any thoughts he has of you, at least for a little while. Keep him talking long enough, and he may even drop interest in you entirely instead returning to his work on the current chime. 12 If the chime maker does choose you as the source for his next chime, do the best you can to focus his attention on one of your hands, he often only takes the pieces he needs for the next wind chime along with the flesh surrounding them, so you might be able to get him to simply take one of your hands, as opposed to other more necessary body parts. Should you have such luck, it's obviously best you get to a hospital immediately afterwards. That should be everything you need to know about the chime maker. He's easily one of the more artistic individuals in Kribble Rock Run, gruesome as his art may be. Each and every one of those chimes represents a hapless creature that was either badly disfigured or completely dismembered by the chime maker, and he's unfortunately very good at catching new subjects, as he calls them. There are actually so many chimes on that tree that its branches have begun to sag. However, the chime maker refuses to stop making them, to him, each wind chime sings a special song, and he believes the best songs come for those chimes made from the sources with the most character. But regardless of the song's perceived quality, he's become heavily obsessed with each of them, to the point that he wants to hear as many of these songs as possible. But while these desires are primarily what makes him a problem, they aren't actually what makes the chime maker dangerous, that would be his eyes. To expand on why that is, let us tell you about a little incident that happened a while back. About five months ago, a hiker was found badly injured on one of the highways close to Kribble Rock Run. He was missing most of his fingertips, as well as his entire left arm. 
He had been reported missing the previous day in a nearby forest by the group he'd been hiking with, and was quickly questioned by local authorities upon his arrival at a hospital. What he told them was so difficult to believe it actually landed him in a psychiatric ward for quite some time. He had claimed that, while he was hiking, a strangely beautiful whistling sound filled the air. Somehow, his group didn't hear the sound at all, and also failed to realize he had wandered off to follow the sound. Eventually, the hiker found the source to the whistling. And was immediately horrified by it. The source turned out to be a creature hanging high in a tree, and strongly resembling a man. Except it had hands and feet like a monkey, as well as long, sharp-looking teeth. The hiker was about to get as far away from this man as he could when he suddenly noticed the thing's eyes. Those eyes, the hiker had said, were beautiful. That human-like creature's mass of irises contained so many colors they looked like small circular rainbows, shimmering and rippling within its eyes like vibrant pools. They were so brilliantly colorful that the hiker couldn't look away, not even as the man slowly descended from the tree, not even as the man landed on the ground next to him with a thud, not even as the man grabbed him by the shoulder and pulled him into the trees. It wasn't until that man with those brilliantly entrancing eyes sunk its teeth into his arm that the hiker could finally look away, but even then he only did so because he blacked out. Next thing he remembered, he was in a hospital bed, being treated for his wounds. And this, you see, is why the chime maker wears that blindfold, just as those mesmerizing eyes entrance his victims, the chime maker himself is entranced by each and every new victim he claims. Their individual personalities and mannerisms slowly absorb all his attention, to the point that he can't focus on anything but a ravenous curiosity of what kind of song a wind chime made from such a unique individual could make. Without that blindfold, he'd be so easily distracted by all the living things around him that he'd probably never even finish a single wind chime. So, if you would, be careful around the chime maker, and above all else, do not make him wish to hear your song. Sincerely, Rick, and Nick Castillo